Hey everyone, I'm Jeff Teague, senior salesperson with Fred Anderson Toyota in Raleigh. If you're looking for a new Toyota in the North Carolina area, ask to work with me specifically, Jeff Teague. Now, one of my viewers, Teresa down in New Orleans, had a question. How do you tell the 2019 Forerunners apart, SR5 four-wheel drive against limited four-wheel drive? I'm gonna show you all the differences so that you can pick the best one for you. Let's get started. Let's get it started in here. Let's get it started hot. The Forerunner, the last true SUV on the planet, the last chief, the last bunny on the prairie, the last of the Mohicans, the last sheriff in the West. Now it's a body on frame design, which means the body is bolted securely to the frame. It can withstand tremendous amounts of pressure. If you're going off-roading in the woods, bouncing around in the mountains, riding on the sand at the beach, now differences in the front end. SR5, it has a wire mesh sporty grille here, but it also has color keyed accents throughout the front projector beam headlights, daytime running lights, and also fog lights. The ground clearance, because it's a four-wheel drive, it's 9.6 inches. If it was a two-wheel drive, it would be 9.0 inches. Same ground clearance on this 4x4 Limited here at 9.6 inches. It has projector beam headlights, daytime running lights, and also fog lights. Now you'll see parking sensors along the front. You'll also see those in the back. That way it can detect if you're getting close to something in front, like a light post or the front of your garage. It's laced and lined with these luxurious chrome accents all the way through the front, along with accent strip along the bottom. Which one do you like better? Here's a close-up comparison of the front end, SR5. Versus the Limited. Hey, I see my reflection in that shiny chrome. Got it blinged out. I'm really impressed with myself. This is such a cool shot. We've got the side profiles of SR5 and Limited. Notice the differences in wheels. We've got 17 inch silver painted alloy rims here versus 20 inch black and silver alloy rims on the Limited. Close up view of SR5. As we zero in on these alloy rims here. The running boards, those were added as an option just so you know. I got it a little dirty guys, but who doesn't like getting down and dirty in an SUV like this? Fuel tank size, 23 gallons, SR5 on the side. Color key door handles. It does not have the smart key entry because it's not a smart key, it's a traditional key. And then the side mirrors, they're color keyed as well. No side turn signal indicators on that. And then here's our friend, the limited up close and personal. You can see it has chrome accents all along the side, window accents along the bottom, even on the roof rails. On the SR5, they're capped with black. Here's those wheels. Now these do have the smart key sensors. The door handles are in chrome, but when you put your hand on it like this, it would automatically unlock and that's how you lock it like that. The mirrors have side turn signal indicators. And let's look at the wheels side by side. Z plane, Z plane. Now let's look at the wheels. Check out the rear ends of this car. That didn't sound awkward at all. I like big butts and I cannot lie. So now the SR5, it has a lowering rear window. You can do that from the front. Also, color keyed accent along the Forerunner strip here. Backup camera solidly under here. Color keyed bumper with no chrome accents. It has a 5,000 pound tow capacity. LED tail lights standard on all trim levels. Now comparison here, we've got again a lowering back window chrome accents along the Forerunner strip. Then we've got accent stripes along the back, also 5,000 pound tow capacity, and then parking sensors along the back. So if you're backing up to something, then it'll beep, 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 boom. Here's a close up of SR5. See the color keyed accent strip along Forerunner. And then as compared to the chrome accents in the back, Getting closer, you can see the parking sensors right there in the back as well. There are three different ways to configure the back third row area. You can have either nothing there, 
you can have a third row seating section or you can have the sliding rear cargo deck. So there are three ways, three, three ways. Ah, ah. Now I'll show you on the limited here. This one has the third row. So you can see plenty of storage room here. Good room to crash out and sleep. But I did promise I was going to show you the third row. It pops up. This is the back mat. Get that out of the way. And then there. So this is the room behind the third row, but that's how the seats go up. And then the sliding rear cargo deck. This is kind of cool. It makes a workbench or tailgating bench, that type of a thing. It pulls out here. It holds 440 pounds. So you can use it when you're watching a game, let's say at Little League, when you're watching the fireworks, you're tailgating, any type of thing, or you can be using it as a workbench, sort of like sawhorses with a tabletop. Holla! And then performance under the hood. You'll see they both have soundproofing material and pneumatic lifts, we like that. The engine itself, it is a 4.0 liter dual overhead cam, 24 valve V6 engine with dual independent variable valve timing with intelligence. It's 270 horsepower, 278 foot pounds of torque. It does have for its transmission, it's a five speed automatic transmission. You can get this in rear wheel drive or the part time four wheel drive with the active traction control. A couple other notes if you get the two wheel drive, it has automatic limited slip differential. And then if you get the four wheel drive, it has downhill assist control and hill start assist control. I'm sitting in the SR5 right now to show you back seat passenger space. There's a lot of room, whether you're looking at headroom, leg room, shoulder room, hip room, that kind of stuff. This is a scenario where there's a taller person sitting in front of you with the seat reclined. In other words, there's still a good amount of leg room, although it's a little bit tighter. Plenty of room here for the person in the middle seat. And then here, lots of headroom. Again, I'm 5'8", but there's still plenty of room for a taller person. This is the scenario where somebody shorter is sitting in front of you and lots and lots of leg room. And I did want to show you accommodations for backseat people. There's a mesh pocket there on both sides and then rear air vents, two different circular 12 volt plug-in ports like that. And then this one has double USB ports added so people can charge their devices. That was added as an option at the regional port, the regional assembly plant. And then just for our car seats, you can see anywhere you see those little dots, that's where there's going to be a latch for car seats. So you can fit them in any one of the three seats in the back. This is the SR5 interior. I'm looking from the back seats. This is the graphite ash interior. It's two-tone with patterns, lighter and darker. You can see the Entune. This is normally Entune Audio Plus, but this has the Entune Premium Audio with navigation built in. And you can see the rest of the interior. Very good visibility in this car, I will tell you, both in the front and the back. There's the four-wheel drive mechanism, and this is also so you can lower that rear window. Here's the interior looking from the passenger side. I wanted to show you the passenger seat. This is a four-way manual adjustable one so the lever lowers the back of the seat, reclines it, and then the bar moves you forward and backward. That's on the SR5. We're walking, we're walking. It reminds me of in college at Western Michigan my orientation leader walked backward. We're walking, we're walking. Here is the interior looking from the driver's window. See the two-tone, very durable fabric seats. This one has power adjustable seat. So this is for the back of the seat here, recline, lumbar support. You can go forward, backward, you can twist it. These are gonna be bullet points of the interior since I'm comparing differences here. See the instrumentation cluster steering wheel I will show this one though when you push this button down lowers the back window and raises it that way you can get some breeze storage compartment in here with the circular 12 volt port right there 
four-wheel drive mechanism. It has single temperature controls, in other words, not digital. That's the fan speed. This is the temperature. This is where it comes out. 6.1 inch Entune premium audio system. You'll get satellite radio, HD radio, advanced voice recognition, and navigation system. This is because it has the Entune premium audio upgrade. And actually that's on the Audio Plus as well. It's just the navigation was added to it. SR5 up top has lighted vanity mirrors for both sides with visor extenders so the sun won't get you. Don't let the sun blind me. Controls up top here. And then no moonroof standard on the SR5. The Limited in comparison, this is gonna be leather seats, not soft text, leather seats, front and back, all that jazz. It has the same mesh side pockets and also it has rear air vents, the 12 volt power ports and the double USB port that was added as an option. You can see sneak preview, it has a moonroof standard on it. And the Limited interior, in comparison, it has wood grain accent trim, has the Entune premium audio, but it has JBL speakers. I'll tell you about those in just a minute. What do you think, guys? Huh? 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 Okay, now passenger seating. This one has power controls, so you can use this to move the seat back and forth, and then it goes forward and backward. It does not, as you can see from the picture, it does not go up and down. So no height adjustment there. The wood panel trim. Looks very different on the inside though versus the SR5. Another angle of the Limited here, the leather trim seats. I'm going to show you something special about those seats too. Has the same power driver seat controls. All right, buttons now for parking sonar in the front and the rear. That activates it. Same instrumentation cluster there. Leather trim steering wheel. Fancy. Auto dimming rear view mirror. And it does have home link for garage door openers. It also comes with safety connect and your moonroof controls. Just like that. All right. Down here, the temperature controls. I'm trying to get in here. Okay, it's dual temperature controls so that you can be at two different temperatures here. Now the heated seats. Heated seats or cooled seats. A few other things to show you here. We've got memory seating standard on the Limited with two different seat position settings. My Star Wars socks. I am your father. And then we've got JBL Sound. JBL takes a lot of pride in saying they have concert-like performance inside your vehicles, so it sounds like you're at the symphony, like you're at a sporting event, like you're at a concert, or right in the recording studio. I highly recommend JBL Sound. Here's the SR5 window sticker. Four-wheel drive, SR5, made in Japan, silver with black graphite interior, safety ratings, the gas mileage, 18 combined, 17 in the city, 20 in the highway. Standard equipment from the factory on the left side. The right side, optional equipment that was added at the factory. The sliding rear cargo deck, the Entune premium audio with nav, and then you get a $500 keep it wild savings. Wild thing. These were options that were added at the regional assembly plant in Jacksonville. And then this has an MSRP. MSRP, yeah, you know me. 39.7. Now here's the window sticker on the limited four wheel drive. We're gonna see a big jump in price, but it has a lot of extra value added to it. Four wheel drive limited, Barcelona red with black graphite interior made in Japan. Same gas mileage. Standard equipment from the factory on the left side. This one has for options, the third row seating. Also $1,000 in Keep It Wild sale savings, which almost saves you the price of the leather seats in the back, the third row. This was added at the regional port. And then this one has a window sticker. Drum roll, please. Oh wait, no drum roll needed. There's the price, 48.3. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, the time has come. I've done all the heavy lifting, the grunt work, the leg work. Now it's time for you guys to do the really hard part. Write down in the comments section which one you would choose if you could, balancing out value, options, features against the price. Those are both very important. It's like a tightrope walker. We're trying to balance, we're trying to stay up. Price, value, price, value, features, options. This is exciting, this is thrilling, cause it's a thriller, thriller night. See you next time, hee hee.